The following podcast is a presentation of Project Entertainment Network. You're listening to Creeping Wave Radio, a documentation of our decidedly creepy escapades here on Mind. once the mics go off. My congratulations. It would appear you made it out alive. Well, most of us. Wait a minute. Where is Napoleon? He was the only one of you... I actually had any investment in. He went back for... Ooh, that's probably not good. Uh, nope. Oh, Napoleon. And also Dorcas. Wait, look. Something's moving in the wreckage. Did they make it? No, it's... It's Robo Hitler. No, just his head. Thought it might make a nice centerpiece. I disabled the mouth, of course. Ah, Dorcas, you made it! But how? I think Nap could explain that better than me. Nap, would you get up already? Sorry, it's just getting beaten up by a robo-Nazi and exploding all in the same day. Takes a lot out of me. Don't be so dramatic. Here, give me your hand. There he is. Not a scratch on him. Oh, how exactly did you kids pull it off? When I heard the explosion go off, I asked Sorochka to protect us. Anatole had already passed out from blood loss, and Dorcas was riding piggyback on Robo Hitler, so neither of them overrid my command. The walls sort of formed a bubble around us, and once the explosion passed, well, here we are. Ah, oh, so you went back for Dorcas. Well, yeah. I guess you've made your choice then. You've finally gotten Margot out of your system. Oh, well, I... Nap, can I have a word? Sure. What's up? Yes, by all means, Dorcas. Do tell us what is up. I meant in private. (sighs) You've got to have a talk with your boss about boundaries, Nap. Yeah, I know. I've been meaning to, it's just, uh, he's all-powerful, and you know how it is. He just wants to protect you, is all. I remember what that was like. Yeah, those were the days, huh? That they were. (sighs) Running from souped-up commies was one thing, but the stuff I'm caught up in now? (laughs) Demons, werewolves, vampires, and, well, all of this. I mean, sure, it's a laugh now and again, but... I don't know if you'd want to deal with it on the daily. And I know you well enough that I have to wonder if that's what you want either. Oh. Have you ever thought about that? What you want? Not really. I mean, what's the point? When in life do we really ever get what we want, anyway? Still just floating from one day to the next. Yeah. I guess so. For how long, I wonder? (laughs) I try not to think about it myself. I know. I guess I'd just feel bad if it was me that kept you from going out there and getting reacquainted with life. Not all of it's as awful as, well, this, or so I've heard. And if I ever get tired of running with the Halloween set, I'll come find you. Like last time. Well, actually, I guess it was you who found me. Well, I made the introduction, but Nap, you're not very subtle. If you come looking, I'm sure I'll hear about it. Until then, let's part as friends. Yeah. I'd like that. Till further possibilities present themselves. (laughs) Yeah. You know, I think I'm going to toss Robo Hitler's head. I'm not sure I want to be reminded of all of... this. Yeah, and that brain is still alive in there, you know? He'd just be sitting there, watching you in silence while you're eating dinner. Ugh! No thank you! Ugh! Auf Wiedersehen, asshole! 
hope I'm not interrupting anything. No, I've said what I needed to. Goodbye, Nap. Great. Nice talking with you. Oh, wait, Dorcas, I... Now, Nap, that was some trick back there, you busting out of the wreckage and all. Who does that? This guy, that's who. You see, Nap, we at the Temporal Mitigation Agency have a proposal for you. Why me? Why me? Would you get a load of this guy? Well, because it was your hot little hand that set the six cylinders of Dominion in motion. And it's that same paw that's got to set off the rest of them. Yeah, that was a long time ago, and honestly, I don't really want to take over the world, guys. If you'll excuse me, please? Oh no, you misunderstand. The process has already begun. You've set off a beacon, calling the most dastardly types from all the surrounding dimensions to come and win you over to their cause. Well, that doesn't sound so bad. Through torture and the murder of those you love. Oh. That's right. And if you don't finish the cycle, they'll just keep coming. But not to worry. Our boss at the Temporal Mitigation Agency has talked to your boss. You mean old Scratch? That's the guy. We took him on a little detour while we were evacuating the base. And he's decided to join forces to hunt down the second of the six cylinders of Dominion. Wait, no. Why does old Scratch need to join forces with anyone? Glad you asked. You see, the second cylinder was destroyed in the early 2000s. We're not exactly sure how or when. Well, that's good. No, that's bad. It means the cycle will remain unfinished. Unless... I go back in time and activate the second cylinder. You hear that? The kid is sharp. Can't deny it. You see, time on an interdimensional scale isn't linear, so if you activate the second cylinder now or activate it 25 years in the past, same difference. So long as it's your hand that does the deed, that is. And you don't have to worry about the hewer. The hewer? That's our boss. Great guy. He's been nominated for like five Nobel Peace Prizes for his work in temporal peacekeeping. But in the future. So you wouldn't have heard about any of that yet. And of course, your immortal champions will be by your side. My immortal champions? The beasts you created to protect you when you activated the first cylinders. Ugh, oh, you mean Peter Lorre, Vincent Price, and Boris Karloff? It's funny, I, I don't see them among the survivors. I knew we forgot something. Uh, oh well, I wouldn't call them my friends exactly, and uh, to be honest, they kind of outlived their usefulness anyway. These things happen. Best not to cry over spilled milk. Sorry I couldn't help you with your apocalypse. Look! There, in the rebel. Another survivor? Three of them. <laughs> you lie down to take a quick nap, and you wake up to this mess. I blame nap. Well, at this point, that goes without saying. What happened to that cucumber guy in the Hoover? Oh, we're right here. Oh yeah, we got the munchies. So we stepped out to pick uh, some snacks and boom, we got on to this. <laughs> Can you not relate, Jeremy? <sighs> Those old men are my immortal champions. As in I'm stuck with them? Yes. Oh my, and they look fearsome. <laughs> But I hate those guys. And a good thing, too, seeing as they're your envoys of battle. You mean envoys? You go on. You'll be sending them up against interdimensional beasts who will punish and mutilate their bodies in ways more nightmarish and gruesome than you can possibly imagine. You don't say. Theirs will be an existence of unending torment, punctuated by brief deaths before they respawn to do it all again. Yes, it's really best that you aren't too attached. Yeah, as much as I love the unending torment part of the arrangement, if you don't mind, I'd feel better if I could talk this over with the boss himself. Of course. Go ahead. You'll find everything in order. Scratch? Napoleon. You know better than to disturb me when I'm practicing my violin. This is important. Whatever could be the matter. Did you make an arrangement for me to work with some creepy, time-traveling G-men? Ah, I see you met the fine fellows of the Temporal Mitigation Agency. So, you are working with them. For now. You see, my dear Napoleon, your hand must set off the second cylinder of Dominion, or else. I know. 
They explained it to me. I didn't agree to let you stay on as a playmate for my children. Nor are you here for leisure. Why exactly am I here, Scratch? You have a job to perform, and pout as you might, that won't be changing any time soon. Besides, I thought it might be nice for you to get away from all of this for a spell. Have some rest and relaxation in a simpler time. 1995, to be exact. Away from Margot or Dorcas or anyone I might care about? I don't care to be dragged into your personal affairs, Napoleon. No, of course not. It's not like you to meddle, is it? Where is Margot anyway? I didn't see her outside the base. I guess she still peeved at me. Oh, hadn't you heard? I sent her to stay with her mother. But... Her mother's human. How very astute of you. And Margot's 2,100 and... Oh, her mother's got to be six feet under by now. Why, Napoleon, don't tell me you were never grounded as a child. Grounded? You mean to say she's buried alive, trapped in a grave, staring the rotting corpse of her mother in the face? Oh, Napoleon, you severely overestimate the time needed for decomposition to take place. How could you? The real question is how could she? I warned her what would happen if she continued sporting with you. She's her own child. Don't you care about her at all? I do, in fact. Enough that I'm unwilling to risk her life to one of your little ether tantrums. But she's immortal. As was your mother. You knew about that. All this time, you knew. I take it that in your time as a guest of the good doctor, you managed to uncover some of those memories you've been searching so feverishly for all these years. Yes. And? And now I remember things I'm not sure I want in my head. Memories that tangled themselves into my every thought. Yes. It's quite the burden, isn't it? That machine you used on me? The one that showed me my past? I seem to recall that, yes. Couldn't you use it in reverse? Can't you just take these memories away? If such a thing could be accomplished, I'd have done it for myself long ago. I see. Now, if you don't mind, I was practicing my violin. That song. Is it familiar to you? They say music can awaken memories long dormant in the mind. Tell me, what do you remember? No, nothing really. Nothing? Are you quite certain? I must have heard it in a commercial or something. Yes, that must be it. Or perhaps a film. Maybe a romantic comedy. A Meg Ryan vehicle, perchance. Huh. That's oddly specific. Well, you're heading to the right era for it. Speaking of which, you better start packing for your little adventure. How does one pack for a voyage into the past? I wonder. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I better go pack.
Mikey starts straining his toe. I said, don't you start screaming, too. It was all I could do to knock Dimitri out. After whatever it is Napoleon did to him, I had to beat him unconscious with a spatula held between my teeth. I had to improvise, and until I can gather enough ether to grow my arms and legs back, repairs around here are going to be slower than usual. Have you ever tried to operate a screwdriver with your mouth? Fortunately, when Napoleon formed that bubble of protection around himself and his lady love, he spared our lives too, and Dimitri, well, he's immortal, so, you know. <laughs> now, if you give me a minute, I almost have your job mobile again. Finally! Took you long enough! You should talk. If you hadn't broken my arms and legs in battle, we wouldn't be in this mess. I was blinded by the treacherous cuteness of that chubby, cuddly kitten. No matter. It seems Harushka is well on her way to healing herself. Once we have a functional base of operations, we can focus our energies on gaining revenge against Napoleon and his friends. Especially that rotten werewolf. And that playful kitten! That may prove difficult for you. At the moment, Napoleon is headed 25 years into the past to set off the second of the six cylinders of Dominion before it was destroyed. Ah, uh, Anatole! Who is this guy? <laughs> Let's just say I'm an interested party. Okay, Mr. Party. But how can we stop something like that? Yeah, you're not time travelers. Then it's a good thing that I am. Put it down in there. Ah, oh, jeez. 25 years in the past, huh? So, 1995. Okay, uh, what did people wear in the 90s? Flannel. Lots of flannel. Oh, you're back, huh? Mark away shatter, is it? Just Marco will do. I'm growing to like the sound of it. You heard about my new assignment? Yes. I had expected you'd be sent on it much sooner, actually. Scratch seems reticent to let you stray too far from his sight. Yeah, weird, right? Not really. Ugh, you know, I always hated flannel. It makes me feel like a lumberjack. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but, well, it's false advertisement, you know? In my case, anyway. I mean, I'd just be so embarrassed if someone needed to fell a tree and they saw me and were like, Oh, good, a lumberjack is here. And I'd be like, You're changing the subject. I get to wear dark lipstick again, though. Oh, and barrettes. I always liked barrettes. Those little ones with the bugs, you know? Speaking of which, what's that stuck in your hair? Oh, where? Right here. Let me just... Uh... Ooh, it looks like a chunk of marshmallow, but it's moving. No, crawling. Oh, from the explosion at the base. Looks like I brought a little fragment of it home with me. It looks like it's dancing. <laughs> I think it is. Hello, Sorochka. Please. You're not really going to name it after your- No, because Soratov named it that. Named her that. And that doesn't disturb you. I try not to think about it. Oh, you know what? When we go back to the 90s, I won't have to slog through my podcast anymore. I hate podcasting. And they didn't even have those back then, so that's a big plus. Oh, I'm quite sure Scratch has devised a workaround of some kind for that. It's not like him to relinquish his sphere of influence. Oh, 
Yeah. You're probably right. The shades of the past that Kasuratov showed you. There are only one interpretation of events. No. Those things happened. The only difference is now I have to remember them. Perhaps you can learn from your mistakes? I don't think so. Kasuratov was right about one thing. I am an abomination. I wasn't even meant to be born. But you decided to intercede there. And, and you, you remain, remain ungrateful. <laughs> I don't belong in this world. And despite my best intentions, I ruin everything I set my hands on. No, you're numb, apathetic. You've been overwhelmed by life and its endless disappointments. In response, you've relinquished your control. You've been letting yourself drift through years and decades, never questioning the tide. In your absence from your own life, you allow things to get so far out of hand that by the time you actually think to be bothered, there's no recourse left. <laughs> Dorcas said something like that. Yes, I heard. It seems she's less willing to give up on you than you are yourself. What if the reason I'm meant to set off these cylinders isn't just another accident? What if it's the final culmination of that destructive thing within me, and this Hewer person knows it? What makes you say that? He calls himself the Hewer, for one. It is rather pretentious. I mean, yeah. But see, in a mine, the Hewer is the one who cuts a vein of mineral out from the surrounding rock. Is, is that so? Yeah, I had a lot of odd jobs. My resume is all over the place. Well, I don't think we're dealing with a time-traveling miner. No, we're dealing with someone who feels entitled to cut into the past and rearrange time as they see fit. Which sucks for everyone else, quite honestly. Well, wouldn't you? Me? No. <laughs> I'd just make things worse if I did. The problem remains that we don't know what or who this hewer sees as valuable, and who or what they think can just be chipped away to nothing. Then perhaps we'd best devote ourselves to your training. Get you back into the practice of wielding ether again. Yeah, I guess we could do that. You have many allies waiting in the ethereal. If you could but learn to call them to your side. <laughs> yeah, like who? Are you making that obnoxious tapping? No, not me. Kay, just like in the cell. Kay! Okay, what? No, the letter K. It's Morse code. It means invitation to transmit. Okay, guys, so this was our final episode of the season. This is the first time that we've actually been able to do the full nine episode run from Halloween to Christmas, which is kind of what we always originally planned for this to be sort of a seasonal event. Uh, but we'd like to do that going forward uh, as we're getting a little more experience under our belt, as we're, we're figuring this out a little bit more. We are pretty much entirely independent at this point, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is why we're really so grateful to our Patreons, because uh, it's through them that we're able to take time out once a year and do this. Uh, like I had said, we've been recording since summer, we've been writing the script since way before that, so it is a big undertaking, and it does require a little bit of support, so thank you so much to The Gramerica Show, Nikki Benfield, and The Lovable Neil. And if you'd like to be a Patreon, then you can go to www.patreon.com slash lucidnap, all one word. The link will be in the description below. 
If you'd like to give a small one-time donation, you can always do that. You just go to buymeacoffee.com slash lucidnap, or you can go to my website, lostbreadcomic.com, and you can buy prints, buy art. Uh, we're hopefully going to be having some cool merchandise coming up, but uh, we're trying to arrange the most cost-effective printing, because <laughs> uh, it's, it's a bit, it's a bit much. But uh, you know what? Thank you guys so much for listening and for coming along on this ride with us. And thank you so much to Galley Fisher for uh, giving us permission to use the song in this moment that she did in cooperation with Crystal Skies. And so we are so grateful for her letting us use that beautiful song. And it's very relevant to the subjects of memory, of recollection, of maybe regret and looking back on the past. That's kind of the theme of the show. So we are pretty excited about it. Uh, you may remember Galley Fisher from Digital Lizards of Doom, and she's sort of stepping out on her own, sort of doing her own thing, paving her own way. So we're very excited to see where her career goes. And uh, yeah, good luck to her. So guys, if you want to find out more about any of our musicians or any of our actors, uh, the links are always down in the description box below. And you can just go ahead and check that out. I'm sure they would appreciate it. So yeah, please feel free to do that. Um, we love when you guys uh, appreciate our talent and um, show them love on social media. Let them know they're doing a good job. Uh, I'm sure it's very important to them and it's very important to us too because <laughs> they, they really give a lot to this and we couldn't do it without them. So we are eternally grateful. Okay, guys, thank you so much for listening. And again, all the links down below. So talk to you later. Bye. Creeping Wave and the You Mind are brought to you by Lucid Nap Productions in cooperation with a hairy old man. I'm not that hairy. You're, you're shedding all over the place right now. Not exactly. A podcast where three horror authors discuss monsters? It must be Wondering Monster Roll Initiative! Uh, I feel like once you put the mask on it... It's, <laughs> once you put the mask on it, it's a monster? Please rise for his yeah, dishonor. Nope, uh, Judge of the Abyss. The <laughs> fetid pig at the table of suffering. You brought... You brought, you brought... You brought the Whomping Willow? I brought a goddamn kaiju. <laughs> we'll see you every Monday. This has been a presentation of the Project Entertainment Network. It is still goat versus fish. And it was written and it was written. It is still goat versus fish. It is still goat versus fish. And it is forever goat versus fish. It is forever goat versus fish.